1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3, I find some words that I want to bring to your attention this morning. And if you're listening to a, a title for my message this morning, it is Sudden Destruction Coming. Now, Paul had just given the great passage that describes the coming, the second coming, or that is the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ in the air and the rapture of the church over the earth uh, when they are, the believers are transformed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye into his own glorious likeness. The dead in Christ are, right, are raised and they ascend uh, into heaven and uh, we follow and uh, we meet the Lord in the air in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord and then Paul of course that's where the chapter ends he says wherefore comfort one another with these words but actually uh, Paul's chain of thought does not end there because he talks about what happens after the church ascends into glory in the following chapter beginning in verse 1. This is what he said. Of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And so, the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night, and sudden destruction shall come, and as taking them unaware. And so, uh, let us call for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray this morning that you would bless the message and that it might be clearly understood and that it might be uh, open, received with an open heart and Lord to the salvation of the unbeliever and Lord to the rededication of those who know you and trust you as their personal Lord and Savior. And that everyone leaving this place today might be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which I believe this morning is soon. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. And so uh, Paul said that uh, I don't need to tell you when these things are going to happen because you already know that in the first place, uh, the Lord comes in the, uh, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night and in an hour in which they think not and an hour in which they are least prepared and an hour in which they say peace and safety all is at well now he said sudden destruction comes now years ago uh, shortly after we moved into our building and established Faith Baptist Church, before we hardly knew it, the year 2000 was upon us. And with the occurrence of uh, the year 2000, you understand that the, uh, that the traditional view uh, is that the earth would be 6,000 years old at that time. And according to the world week theory, uh, then uh, we were about to embark on the seventh uh, century after the formation of the, of the earth, which means the millennium. And so everybody then was, had a high excellent, or that is uh, uh, an air of expectation about the beginning of the seventh millennium. I believe to a great extent that might have been what 9-11 was all about. Uh, believing that the millennial was upon us. and But I also 
know this, that it wasn't hard to get a church full of people back in those days. You know, you just uh, visited and you, you knocked on their doors and you invited people and they would come to church. I do know that since that time, uh, there has been a, an air or a sense of disillusionment that somehow or another uh, the millennial had to come and gone and nothing had happened and people then became apathetic and disconcerned, unconcerned and they say uh, maybe rationalizing themselves as Paul said well you know I've heard it said all of my life that Jesus was about to return and but yet still the world continues as it always has and Jesus has not come and so therefore they become disinterested and uh, simply fall away that's it precisely what Paul is telling us here that once they begin or that is the mass majority of people begin to think that they are saved from the wrath of God or any judgment from God and begin to think of the um, say peace and safety sudden destruction comes what do we mean by sudden destruction I want to say something I want to tell you uh, you may have heard about the Tuguska event it, it occurred in 1908 in a uh, region of uh, well an uninhabited region of Siberia in Russia but a huge asteroid uh, or I guess it was an asteroid that we don't really actually know uh, nobody knows what it was but it came booming uh, uh, out of from outer space into the earth's atmosphere and uh, exploded above the ground and uh, uh, flattening trees radially outward for an area or a diameter of 30 miles. In other words, the fireball that was created was larger or would have covered an area larger than Washington, D.C. Uh, and uh, if it had occurred over uh, a major metropolitan in Russia or anywhere in the world, it would have wiped out its population instantly. But Mercifully, uh, in that part of the region of the world, there was only a few people and only a few deaths uh, uh, recurred from it. But the blast was heard uh, many hundreds of miles away and the light could be seen uh, from the blood flash as far away as London. And, uh, uh, and so, in other words, no one is expecting that, but it occurred and uh, uh, no one knows what or why it happened. There was something else that happened on February the 15th, 2013. I don't know if you heard about it or, or paid any attention to it or not, but it was, uh, uh, I don't even know if it was even reported uh, by uh, the news media in the United States. But it happened over a town uh, in uh, central Russia. Now, I can't even pronounce the name of the town because I don't speak Russian. They, they talk a funny kind of English as far as I'm concerned. I can't pronounce it. But in, anyway, it's a funny sound in English to me. But it, I'm just a southerner, you know, just an old country boy. And, but anyway, uh, at 9.15 in the morning, people had gone to work. And uh, they, it was a, just a routine day. I, they weren't expecting anything to happen out of the ordinary or unusual. Then suddenly from, uh, from outer space, an asteroid come booming into the atmosphere and uh, leaving uh, a huge fireball. And uh, when it uh, uh, was practically over the city, it exploded and uh, over a thousand people were injured and miraculously there were no deaths but over a thousand people were injured and they were certainly not expecting anything there was certainly no forewarning and that's my point and uh, 
but uh, scientists have since measured the explosion and said that it was equal to 500 kiloton uh, of TNT. Now, I want you to know that the first atomic bomb, little boy, that was dropped over uh, uh, Hiroshima was only 15 kiloton uh, uh, of TNT, equal to that of 15 kiloton of TNT. So this was a tremendous, a tremendous explosion. And, but there was no warning whatsoever. And the people thought, well, it's the end of the world. Uh, it happened suddenly. And then there was the, uh, the Indian Ocean tsunami of 2004. And the reason I mention these things to you is because you ought to remember these. It happened just before Christmas in 2004. And uh, there was a huge wave that spread out across the Indian Ocean and slammed into the shorelines of uh, uh, Sri Lanka and places uh, 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 that you and I probably never heard. People were on vacation. And uh, they were um, uh, celebrating their prosperity and were totally unexpected. And uh, if, you, uh, if you Google the event, you will find that a tsunami, uh, just before it arrives, uh, the, uh, the, the shoreline recedes. And people walked out on the beach and were, what in the world? Looks like the ocean is going away. But it's almost as if that ocean as a monster opened its mouth and people walked into the jaws of that monster and uh, suddenly a huge wave rose up out of the sea and before it had subsided it had destroyed and killed 250,000 people and they had no idea that it was even coming. And so <coughs> Now, when I saw that, it reminded me of that verse of Scripture, that in a time in which you think not, sudden, dis and you say, peace and safety, prosperity and happiness. It's a time now to take our leisure. It's a time now to enjoy our prosperity. It's a time now to forget about our religious convictions and abandon our moral values for we are completely safe now in the haven that we have built for ourselves. And sudden destruction coming. I was, uh, I used to have, he played basketball with us. On a, you know, almost every Sunday. He, he went to Mary Montgomery High School. As a matter of fact, he led the county in scoring one year, so I could call his name, but you would probably know him. Some of you might remember him. And one day he was down, uh, he was on Gulf Shores with his son. That was a fairly clear day. There's a cloud off in the distance, but uh, certainly nothing to make him think that there was any danger. And all of a sudden, a clap of lightning, and he was dead before he hit the ground. A lightning from out of the blue. And so... In an hour, which illustrated to me once again the truth, that in an hour in which you think not, sudden destruction comes. So what am I saying to you today? I'm saying to you to prepare yourself now. For today is the day of salvation. There is no promise of tomorrow for any of us seated here. You might say to me, well, you know, I don't live, uh, I've never seen an asteroid come booming out of the sky. And I've never, uh, we don't live near the coast or a tsunami is not going to get me. Well, I, this young man didn't believe that he was going to be struck by uh, lightning either and took take his life. And Brother Dale mentioned something this morning about the possibility that every time, every time we meet somebody along the highway, I was uh, driving off one morning to breakfast, I think it was, and, and uh, there was an oncoming car that just, just simply swerved over into uh, my lane, and 
And uh, if I had not been watching or if I'd have been distracted, there would have been a hit on 